We're talking about Rabbi Choron of Erd and his letter that he wrote that seemed to support the Hamburg Temple uh, of the Reform. I mean, it wasn't the Reform Movement yet, but um, the reformative Hamburg Temple in 1819 um, and uh, the reaction to him. And uh, this is one of the reactions to him from, um, uh, this is in the book, Eli de Brehebrit, published by the Hamburg Festen same year. And this is from uh, the rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer of Trist, which is in the country of Meherin. That's Meherin. Trist back then was part of uh, Austria-Hungary. Okay. I don't know what that means, yeah. Let's see. Moravia. Everything in Yiddish sounds a little familiar. Okay. Uh, so, you, okay, he's the Rambay Moravia of, of Trist. Baal Machaber, Shalz Chivas Shemen Rokeach. He wrote a book called Shemen Rokeach and uh, several other books. Taras said, Oh, actually, it's interesting. Shev Shmeitzel is a very well known book. I also wrote the book Shev Shmeitzel, which is a uh, it's studied in yeshivas a lot. It is a compendium of, of, of um, analytical ideas from the Talmud um, about Jewish law, uh, Columbus. Okay. And uh, he writes this letter to the Hamburg Besden and he says, uh, let's see what John wrote. Welcome, Jonah. Okay, so we're just reading uh, this letter uh, from the rabbi, uh, from a blazer of Trist, uh, which is in Moravia. Uh, it's a letter um, uh, in the Book of the Hamburg Besden against the Reformation. And, um, and here he's going to write quite a bit about Rabbi Choran and criticism of him. Uh, it's not good what I heard. Um, you know, woe is to us that we have heard such a thing. He's writing to the Hamburg Besden, which of course is the Orthodox Hamburg Besden. And he says, there are people from your community who have exited your community, your holy community. They have separated themselves from the community. And they are out to destroy the holy religion. Um, and this is what they're trying to do. They have built a Beit Tfila. They've built a synagogue like all of the other nations, right? In other words, it's an interesting question. If you're Orthodox in 1819, and there's this very new sort of movement, uh, I assume it wasn't even called reform yet. I don't know, but um, they build a temple. They wanna have prayers in German. They wanna have an organ. They move the bima to the front. They make a mechitza that you, that's a balcony that you can see over, um, right? So, and they're arguing halachically for all of these things, which you could argue for halachically, we've said that. But right, what's, what's your reaction as Orthodox Jews? So over here, the reaction is, well, these people are just trying to be Protestants, trying to be Christians. That's exactly what they're trying to do. The Habayit, right now, of course, the perspective from the other side, take Rav Horan, for instance, right? He's like, well, look at the Orthodox synagogues today. It's a balagan. If a non Jew would walk in, they'd think it's, it's, it, it's an insane place. Everybody's on the different page and nobody understands what they're saying because they're praying in Hebrew. And right, the, there are criticisms on both sides. And, and uh, who was right? I'm not even sure we know historically uh, because you know, had people responded differently, things would have gone differently and we wouldn't know. Um, obviously, the reform movement diverged tremendously from Orthodoxy. And... Uh, um, but uh, they, they, they have built for themselves a Beit Fila synagogue like all the other nations. And this house of worship is closed six days a week and it's open on Shabbos. Now remember, Bechorin actually had made an argument for, uh, for only meeting on Shabbos. Uh, he didn't think it was the best idea, but he said, you know, uh, maybe it would give you a better sense of awe 
you can pray at home the rest of the week and you have a better sense of all when you walk into the shul uh, on Shabbos. Understand here. Shema Yifzachu Ashtei Hasi. Shema Yifzachu Ashtei Hasi. There they are. They are balancing themselves on two sides of a of a knife of a of a of an edge. Now, what is this? This is a this is a line that is drawn from the story, of course, in the prophets of Eliyahu and the Nevi'e Habal, right? The, the prophets of Baal, when Eliyahu uh, uh, is trying to fight off the prophets of Baal, and, um, and he says, you know, you, your God can't do anything, you're idle, and, uh, and he covers an altar with water, and he puts an animal on it, and a fire comes down in heaven and consumes it. But Elijah's criticism of the prophets of Baal are until, uh, and of the Jewish people that are following the prophets of Baal, until when it's exactly this lunch. Uh, until when are you going to, you know, try and have your cake and eat it too? You want to be the Jewish people, but you also want to worship Baal, an idol. And uh, you can't do both. Uh, and so I think it's telling that he lifts his post from here. I mean, he, he, that's how he sees the reform, this new reformed temple. They want to pray a little in Hebrew, and they want to play a little bit in the language of the nations, right? and what's German. Um, and they're also getting rid of the order of prayer, and they want to replace it with their own idea of what the order of prayer should be. They're changing the matbeah, the, the coin, the die of prayer, and right? the Talmud says you can't change the structure of a blessing. Um, and they're getting rid of the places where we talk about in our prayers about the redemption. Uh, they also are having an organ on Shabbos and Yante for, um, it's interesting, Psuke de Zimra. That's what they're using it for. He says, Oi, alzat yidvu kohadavim. Upon this, we should have, uh, we should, we, we are more, we are worried, we are mourning. Uh, and anybody who hears this, um, they, uh, and they're relying on this book that they've written, Nogat Tzedek, which we just finished, you know, reading a long letter from, uh, which was printed in Dessau, Belihas Kamas Chaberir, without anybody's approbation. Sham Namar Pasuk Psak Me'ezer Rab Medina Italia, and there they quote a rabbi from Italy, it was Rabbi Riccanati, who they had quoted, um, who, who lived in Italy, right? Now, one of the, I think, criticisms you could make of them, why, why do they pick and choose the rabbis that they pick, right? Rabbi Horn, Rabbi um, Moses, and, and a rabbi from Italy. Shehitil uh, Zambarga, this rabbi from Italy told them they could use an organ on Shabbos um, through a non-Jew. And the rabbi of Erd, uh, that's Rabbi um, Aaron Horn, who just finished reading his letter, he has totally, you know, left the ballpark. And he's letting them do uh, all of these things. And this Rabbi Aaron Choren, Yadana Mayola, we know about him. Ain lo yad kamal b'shas supposed to be. He doesn't know anything about Gemara and Halacha. Khalil Lisma Cholorasi, he definitely should not rely on his psakdin, on his, on his guidance, on his, on his, on his halachic advice. Now, you know, whether that's true is, is an important question. We know him. Kiman Safan Man Raka, he's empty. Umiho Isha Sheriata Kim no Gabavao Yamale Libo Lasakin. Who would do this? By the way, this language is lifted, of course, from Megillah Esther. Uh Libo Laso Kain sounds like what Esther says about Haman. So he's kind of upping the, you know, what everybody quotes and what's, you know, what resonates is important. Uh, it says something about how they how they see you know they obviously he's seeing him as an as an as an enemy of, of the Jews. Shanot seder at tefila sheir sidro lananche knesset gadol. They want to change the order of prayer that the men of the great assembly established, uh, as it says in the sechet brachot. We also bear the mekila to sheir kufchaf zikeni mulahem kamenavim nanche knesset gadol were. Were, were 120 men, and among them were prophets. And they established the Amidah in its order. Uh, and everybody knows, Sha'afa Mishnah, the Mishnah in Bracha says that if you 
construct a different format for prayer and blessings, you have not fulfilled your obligation. Um, and they're trying to get rid of the places where it talks about redemption. And that's part of what the men of the Great Assembly established as part of the Amidah. He says, it's clear to me that these folks are denying that they are, that this is heresy. They're denying the basis of our faith and the words of the prophets and the words of our sages. They disregard the Torah and its prophets. Uh, all of these, all of our basic books, you know, they are denied. Uh, all these basic books agree to the order of our prayer, and they want to change it. And the order of our prayer, Shim had made the point that nobody seems to talk about the more Kabbalistic idea that prayer is very specific, that's a certain number of words, a certain number of format. Um, here he does sort of talk about it. He says, these are things that stand in the firmament. I'll tell you about Zarim Bechalu and their foreigners are coming and, and, and desecrating it. Interesting. He says, the rabbi from Italy, I don't know about him. I'm, I'm amazed by what he says. Uh, it's true that the Ramah in the Shulchan Aruch in the Code of Jewish Law says that you could have a non-Jew playing an instrument on Shabbos. And instead of saying that the Ramah just permits it, he says that's our custom to let them do that. But they the call makam the kasa benagu, and he says actually wherever the Ramah says benagu, it's our custom. Every lo morina, that's not the Allah. And certainly to say that that's the halacha, you can do it every Shabbos, have an organ, um, which is not our custom. And they're getting rid of prayers. Uh, and it says in, uh, in the Marik and in other uh, books of halacha, uh, they should not have an organ. Uh, and then he says a really good point. He says, why do they have to go asking a rabbi in Italy? They're in Germany. Why in Italy, I guess, isn't that far, but it's a different, very different culture. And, um, and why are they going to Rabbi Aaron Horan in Hungary? I mean, Hatsari, Ein Begilad, right? Here he's quoting from, from, uh, from the Navi. Uh, I mean, is, is there, there's nobody in Hamburg they can ask? Why haven't they asked the rabbis of Germany where they are? There's no post in Germany that decide Jewish law. They have to go to Moravia. Um, I mean, they, uh, they couldn't they go to Moravia? PM of Poland, they can go to Poland. They have lots of great rabbis there. But the only rabbi they could find to ask is the rabbi in Erd in Hungary. So why? He's, he's asking a good question. Why have they gone to, you know, the rabbis? That, why are they picking and choosing? They're, they're, right, this is a common uh, complaint. They're, they're cherry picking halacha. Obviously, he says, this is a setup, right? They've picked the rabbis they've picked because they know what the answer is going to be. And they know that if they ask the rabbis in Germany or they ask the rabbis in Poland where they are, the answer is going to be no. And uh, the rabbis where they are are going to tell them, of course, you can't just go and change everything. You can't change the custom of your ancestors. It's even if you can find halachic permission, you can't change everything. Right now, it's, he's taking into account the bigger, you know, this is sort of halacha versus public policy we sometimes talk about, right? It's obvious that changing prayer into German is, is a terrible idea. They're not praying six days, only playing on Shabbos, and they want an organ. 
והשנייה, מה שמשנה מהבעיה, שתראו, אין that they're changing the format of, of, the, of the prayer service and taking out places where it talks about the redemption. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and he says, even in later prayers that we've developed, like prayers for the secular government, we also include, right, we end those prayers with praying for the redemption. So, so the, praying for the redemption is an essential part of our prayer service. And thirdly, uh, they want to have uh, an organ. Um, says, um, Shabbos at Tzvila Be'ergov, Kol Eilu Lo Yatur. This is not permitted. Shum Rabu Mora. No rabbi is permitted having an organ in Shul. Hayodei Adnat Badin, who knows what they're talking about. Vashem Yamin, Vashem Tzvila, who believes in, 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 in the Torah. Right? That may not be entirely true. Might might be in one or two shows in, in as we mentioned, in um, in Prague that had. Uh, it's a big question. When did they play them? Did they play the Bukhain? Atem Amalake Abraham, therefore you, the people of Israel, Shirshatem Krovim Melchil Hashem, you're you're on the verge of the desecration of God. Um, you need to be, you know, you're you're saying to the Hamburg Besden, in your town, this would be a desecration of God, you have to be zealous. Uh, because this is a this is a this is a very bad road that they're taking. Okay. So that is uh, his letter. We saw the other day the letter of the Chassam Sofer against Rabbi Chorin, um, and uh, what we will look at uh, tomorrow is Rabbi Chorin's uh, defense of himself, uh, which is in a book called the Varbito that he wrote uh, in response in, right after that in 1820, 1820. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable you can find on Google Books. I mean, how many people have read the Varbito uh, Google Books? I don't know. Probably just us, really. <laughs> Maybe a couple other academics. It's not like anybody's, you know, it's such a, a small art, you know, it's an art, it's a book that, um, it's amazing what, what the internet has been able to. Okay. Have a, um, have a day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.